guys, what's up? It's Joe Rady from Rady's Rides. I'm at some abandoned parking lot here in sunny Clearwater, Florida, because guess what? We have a car that I think a lot of people are actually curious about. This is it. This is a 2022 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. But before we get into this compact turbocharged sedan, let's talk about what's going on here. Hyundai. They've been doing the business here in the United States since the late 1980s with the Hyundai Excel. Boy, oh boy, have things changed because not only do they have a full SUV lineup, they also are still sticking with compact and mid-size sedans. Now this Elantra has gone through a total redesign, but one thing that is important that Hyundai is doing is creating a performance branding image. Not only within their actual Hyundai brand, but also going to the extent of producing the N performance brand. That letter N meaning so much to Hyundai, especially when it comes to fun driving and also, like I said, bringing that extra level of sportiness to the vehicles. Now, this vehicle is not the Elantra N. The Elantra N would be the top dog with more horsepower, a limited slip diff, and a lot of other technology. This one slots in between your standard Elantra and the Elantra N. And if you're wondering, well, Joe, what does this compete with? You're basically gonna be looking at the long-standing Honda Civic Si, and of course, that sister brand, the Kia Forte GT. But what I wanna find out is, is this the better way to go, the better one to buy over those two, whether it be the Kia or the Honda Civic Si, is it better to go with this N line? So let's go ahead, let's dive into this pure black Elantra N line and find out. Right off the bat, the style. It's one of those take it or leave it, love it or hate it designs. There's a lot of angles, a lot of different shapes going on, but I think with our black body color, it really blends in nicely. So at the front of the business, they did a great job with the headlight design. If you remember from the previous generation, they sort of look like tortilla chips. This one though, looking very angular. I love the LED daytime running lamp. And then you're gonna have that projector beam headlight in there. I wish that they went with LED turn signals. No LED turn signals, but they hit it very nicely within the grill. Now, as we kind of back up a little bit, you'll notice you have these large corner air intakes. There is some functionality here, but there's also some non-functionality. So we're gonna give it just a half a zonk because we do have some functionality. Would have been nice to put maybe some LED fog lamps in this lower portion, but I do love the way they extended the front fascia down just to give it a little bit of extra style, but also direct that airflow around the front of the vehicle. Now, when we come across the grill, this is where things get really angular and triangular. Lots of tri triangle shapes within the grill, fully functional top and bottom. This lower splitter area looks super clean because everything kind of molds in together. We got our N-Line performance. So that is the N-Badge, but when you see N-Line, you're getting some performance, but not the whole big picture, but definitely a unique front end. Now, if we're comparing this to the Civic Si, What's interesting is that for the 11th generation, the Civic Si has gotten a cleaner look, a little bit more of a subdue look. Forte GT kind of falls in between this and the Honda Civic Si. So really, beauty is in the eye of the beholder. But let me know what you think about this totally blacked out front grill area on the Elantra N-Line. Now, when we get up onto the low slung hood, you'll notice how you got that V formation going towards the windshield. Everything else is actually pretty smoothly designed on the hood and going into those fenders. I wish they would have blacked out that massive badge. I think that would have kind of cleaned it up just a little bit. But other than that, let's take a trip around the block here and take a look at what we're working with wheel and tire stuff. So these are the wheels specific to the N-Line, 18 inches in diameter. I like the way they put this little rib action going on. That's allow, allows the wheel to actually help generate that airflow. You do have this simulated sort of like single lug nut, central lug nut on the center, but of course you got your lug nuts around the outer part. Nicely styled wheel, machined aluminum, fits well with what we got going on. If you're wondering, well, what's the size of this? 235 on the width and a 40 series sidewall. The one thing that this is missing that the Elantra N has 
Also, the Honda Civic SI has is a limited slip differential. This nor the Kia Forte GT has a limited slip differential. They're all front wheel drive, so that's a good comparison, all front wheel drive. Coming down the fender, they do give you another badge, let people know that you went a little bit higher in performance with the N-Line version. We got color match, mirror caps, no turn singles or anything like that. You do get a standard sunroof. So just like on the Civic Si, just like on the Forte GT, you are gonna get a standard size sunroof. I love the side sill extension, especially the way it kind of flares out as you go towards the passenger door. So they did a really good job with the side sill, help generating that airflow down the side of the vehicle. But there's more of that triangular weirdness. This is where I think some people are not into all the different angles. And if I was a body person at a body shop, this is where accidents are gonna be a lot more expensive to fix because you gotta line all that up. Color matched on the door handles, coming towards the back portion, you do have a vortex generator. Just like Subaru owners or Evo owners like to have the vortex generators on the roof, you got vortex generators to help clean up the air as it comes into the rear pillar. And then swinging around back, it almost looks like this is a sport back, but you have an actual trunk I like on the end line, they give you a nice kick up spoiler on the trunk lid, give you some extra style and also give you some of that downforce. Pretty good looking tail lights, LED on the brake lights, everything else is, is uh, gonna be regular old fashioned bulbs. Blacking out all of this would have been great. If this name, Elantra name and the badge was blacked out, that would have cleaned it up. Let me know what you think about the chrome badges. I do like the way they hide the button for the trunk lid very smartly right underneath the badge. So that's definitely a thumbs up. And then as we go all the way down, you'll notice the width on the back portion of the bumper. I love the way that the trunk lid kind of extends towards the sky. You do have this diffuser area. Would have been great to put the reverse lights down in this triangular area. One of the things I don't understand is why do we have to put fake vent? Why, why is that there? So definitely want to get rid of that. And then we do have a dual tip exhaust, staggered oval shape on the passenger side. Can't wait to hear what that's gonna sound like when we fire it up. But while we go ahead, let's pop the hood and see exactly what's powering our end line. All right, guys, we got the hood popped. You do have a prop rod, but guess what? All the other competition has a prop rod, so we're gonna let it be underneath the hood. Not a bunch of plastic covering the engine. You got a simple cover covering up your ignition coils says turbo on it just to remind you that this does have a turbocharger added to the engine what are we looking at we're looking at a 1.6 liter turbocharged inline four produces 201 horsepower 195 pound feet of torque it is mated to a seven speed dct that's a dual clutch transmission or a six speed manual now remember if you're looking at the civic si that only comes as a manual forte gt you could have it your way, manual or seven speed DCT. Zero to 60 in about 6.3 seconds. Top speed, 125 miles an hour. MPGs, not too shabby, 28 in the city, 36 on the highway. And the car, even with the DCT, weighs 3,050 pounds. So when it comes to a nice balanced package, I think that Hyundai is bringing that balance there. If you want more, you could have more with the Elantra N. Of course, if you're going the Honda route, you could go Type R. But why don't we go ahead, let's fire up this N line and hear what it sounds like. All right, guys, we're inside this 2022 Hyundai Elantra N-Line. I know you're at that point where you're saying, well, Joe, I don't really need like a crazy performance compact car, but I do want more than just what a base Elantra has. I have looked at the Civic Si, and there's just something about it. I think it's the manual transmission that just bothers me, but I like the way I could have 
my cake and eat it too with this end line? How much is it? Very good question. The way that this one is optioned with the seven speed DCT, you're looking at an MSRP around $26,000. Let's see what you get for the money to the door panels. Now, up top, it's all hard plastic. So I am gonna have to zonk that. I do like the way they brought some sort of like wetsuit material that's softer with the red stitching. Just adds a little bit of something, something to the door panel. Even the speaker grill cover up top looks cleanly done. The rest of it is just all black plastic. I'm glad it's not gloss black because then you would have fingerprints everywhere. But they did attempt on the lower speaker grill to make it look stylish. Door pocket is on the tighter side. So maybe one beef and cheddar from Arby's and a little bit of horsey sauce. Other than that, you could fit a can of Surge in there to wash it down. Now going from the door panel to the dash, same story. You're gonna have soft touch material, looks clean. I like the way that they did the black chrome finish on all the trim. And then when it comes to infotainment, this is where the Civic Si blows this thing out of the water. This is your standard eight inch. It's the older operating software. Does have off Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. You go Civic Si, you get the nine inch system that has wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Let me put it in the reverse. There's our backup camera. The great news is you got trajectory and you're using all eight inches. The bad news is it's a little grainy. Start stop button, conveniently placed up top. We do have dual climate, which is really nice. Three stages of heated seats. And then as we kind of swing it around to the backside of the shifter, this is probably one of the best looking shifters I've ever seen in an automatic. It's got the end badge. I like this red anodized material, the nice perforated leather, the red stitching. I'm gonna move it out of the way so that you can see we got two USB A's, a 12 volt and a wireless charging pad and a place for two Twinkies. So they got you covered there. Good old fashioned mechanical emergency brake. The problem is it's all made out of plastic. This whole thing is all hard plastic. You do have an oh crap handle for your passenger. Not sure if they're really gonna need it in here. Maybe if I'm driving. There's your Hyundai key fob, clean. Would have been nice if it said end line. Flip it around, you do have remote start. Two cup holders, semi soft on the armrest. Lift it up, you got a little bit of felt lining and it looks like somebody had like a tiny mouse in there because there's like little hairs stuck all over the place which is kind of gross. So I guess if you wanted to keep your four pet mice in there, that would be a good place. Just keep it a little bit cracked so that they can have some air to breathe. Seats, I like what they did here. Soft material, the red stitching, the end badge in the center there, nice grippy cloth, good bolstering. The problem is, is that for the passenger, you have manual seat controls. I am the captain of this ship. I get electric assist over here on the business side, but I do like the seats. I'm six feet tall, plenty of headroom. Bolstering is actually pretty comfortable, but it's gonna hold you in place. And then you do have a standard size sunroof, which is really nice. But once you get your butt over here to the steering wheel, I got an M badge I wanna show you too. Come on All over. Right guys, business time behind the wheel of this N line. One thing that Hyundai does a really good job is their pedal box, believe it or not. Nice large aluminum dead pedal, brake pedal and throttle. Plus you're gonna get the Elantra N line floor mat set. That's worth an additional five horsepower. There's your seat controls. That lower lumbar feels really good. You'll notice on the seats, the stitching, and it's nice bolstering. Just enough to make it interesting, but not gonna squeeze you like a vice grip. I feel really good in here, being six feet tall, even with the sunroof. Steering wheel, no flat bottom. So you could cry about that all day long, but the great news is you do have red stitching and two different types of leather, the perforated and the smooth, flat gray on all the buttons, nice flat gray on the spokes with the end badge. I love the super size paddles on the back of the wheel to go up and down that seven speed DCT. And then the largest in the auto industry, drive mode selector button. If you miss this with your finger, you're blind and you should not be driving. Dash. I rather have the tack in the center. They got a super size back LED lit speedometer. Tack is over to the left. And then on the right hand side, you have a digital display, 4.2 inches just like you have of your own, where you could actually scroll through information. It's easy to read when you're driving, but if you're trying to film it like we are right now, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but it is nice that they have uh, the backlit gauges and it's a colorful tachometer if you didn't get a full chance to see it. But 
Why don't we go ahead? What's great about this car is we got four doors. That means you get to share the fun of driving with more people and sharing is caring. So let's get in the back seat and see what we got going on. All right, guys, back seat time. What's nice is, is that the back seats actually look almost just like the front seats. And if you've been in a Civic Type R, you would know what, I ta what I'm talking about when some brands can't put the same material in the back seat that matches what's up front. So I am glad that they did that. Back of the seat, you got the plastic. I'm not a big fan of that, but I know people that have kids or people that have friends that are adults that act like kids, when you punch the back of the seat or you pick your nose and wipe it on here, it's easy to keep clean. This is really the biggest thing that has me scratching my head. Nothing. There's absolutely nothing here. No rear AC vents, no connectivity. They don't even give you two cans and a piece of string to talk to somebody. So that to me is a major zonk. I don't even have a pocket over here. So if you bring your nunchucks and your daggers with you into the back seat, you're gonna have to have all that on your lap. And one wrong turn, one wrong move with that dagger will have you singing soprano for the rest of your life if you catch my drift. Seats though, I got plenty of room back here. Just, I'm surrounded by hard plastic. Armrests, somebody's snot rag is in there. I'll get that out of there for you. Mm, it's semi-soft. We'll call it semi-soft with two cup holders. But why don't we go ahead, let's see what kind of mail we could haul in the trunk of this Elantra N-Line. All right guys, time to get in the trunk. Now before I do, there was one other zonk that I let slide that I don't feel like letting it slide anymore. Where's my N-Line badge on the trunk? They got an N-Line badge up front on the sides. I guess they must have ran out of badges the particular day that this one was built. But I'm ready to move on from that. Let's see what kind of junk you could put in the trunk. Hit the secret button, flip it up. You're actually gonna be greeted to 14 cubic feet of space. What I love about it is how low the cargo floor is. Of course, you got the ability to flip the seats down 60 40 split by pulling on these handles and this really is a vehicle that you could go do your autocross event in and have the stuff that you need to make it a successful day and be able to haul it right in the trunk with you but you know what if you're ready i'm ready let's go ahead take this elantra end line for an on throttle little spin all right guys we're in the 2022 elantra end line i know you're saying well joe I'd rather it be a true Elantra N with 275 horsepower. I'm gonna show you that you can have some fun with this N line as well. And it's interesting to compare it to cars like the Civic Si and the Forte GT. Obviously the Forte GT is gonna be almost a direct carbon copy of this vehicle. Just comes down to the different options and technology that's in it and the way it looks. Beauty's in the eye of the beholder. The Civic Si comes with more of those go-fast goodies, the limited slip differential, the better suspension tuning, and in my eyes, that six-speed manual is a real sweetheart, but uh, I'm gonna do a slow roll. We're gonna drop it down the first gear, and uh, we are gonna go on throttle. So if you're ready, I'm ready. Dropping it down the first gear. On throttle, here we go. Makes the right sounds. See how the brakes are. On the brakes, downshift, downshift, nice. I wish it had that limited slip diff, but still not too shabby. I do have it in sport mode. Carrying the speed through this right hand bend. Nice. <laughs> so, see, it just shows that. Even with 201 horsepower, it could put a big smile on your face. And for somebody who maybe doesn't have the budget, the ability to get cheap enough insurance for an Elantra N or a Civic Si, this does kind of bridge the gap. And I'm all about the more the merrier. You know, with these cars being available and being available in different flavors, it makes it possible for other people who are maybe not ready to take that jump or don't want to take that jump to the top trim to, to get in. Just like somebody who's looking at a Civic Si compared to a Type R, that kind of thing. If a Civic Si didn't exist, I think that would actually be a bad thing um, to just shoehorn people into Type Rs. But the paddles are at a good 
distance from the steering wheel, there's just a little too much delay for me. And then as you are aware, if you go eight speed DCT, that has its own transmission cooler, which is really nice. I'm gonna do an on throttle from a dead stop and this is the biggest zonk because it takes a while for it to go get going. So I'm in first gear right now, on throttle. Okay, now we're going. So it takes a few moments to get up and run, but once you're up and running, it, it allows you to just go through those gears and the chassis is well sorted so that's the good news is you have a well sorted chassis you're not going to get into trouble with it especially if you're new to driving or this type of car and it's a car that guess what you go to an autocross event they have classes specifically for this type of vehicle so that you're not competing against somebody with a type r because that would not be fair because of the type of vehicle that this is compared to an elantra n or a type r but Definitely compared to a Civic Si, I think it's a little bit more comfortable. And it's nice that you have the option of an automatic with that DCT transmission. That would be the only reason to, to for me to entertain this car. But I know that I want a manual and the Civic Si is just that better of a performer, especially with the automatic rev match downshift feature that the, the vehicle has. But let's go ahead, drop it down. First gear, on throttle, here we go. On the brakes, a little bit of ABS kicking in. There we go, that's where the limited slip diff would help us get the power down a little bit more effectively. But steering feel is awesome. So one thing I noticed that when I went hard on the brakes to brake for that first right-hander, the ABS did try to intervene. So just something to be aware of. Obviously with an Elantra N, it's a little bit different um, variable setup to the ABS where it's not gonna kick in so early. So that's one thing that I did just notice, but uh, we're gonna try one more time through the twisties and see if we can avoid that. All right guys, one more time for you, definitely one more time for me. Oh, throttle, here we go. <laughs> it's just a fun car to drive. If you put a little bit stickier tire on it, you're even gonna get better grip, obviously. On the brakes, there we go. Yeehaw! <laughs> Really rock stable as you go up the speeds to triple digits. It really is a stable car. There's a bit of wind noise, but that's to be expected. Seats feel good. Everything's well within reach. I think it's a viable option, and I'm a firm believer the more options you have, the better uh, buyer that you're going to be uh, and, and better suited to have different options. But we're going to go ahead, wrap this one up, get back to where it all started. So I'll see you in a split all right, second. guys. Been one heck of a time with this Hyundai Elantra, and I definitely gotta thank everybody at Hyundai for allowing Ready's Rise access to this press fleet vehicle. Let me know what you think. Are they doing enough with the N-Line? Should the N-Line even exist? Or is it better to go with the full-out Elantra N? Or are you gonna take your money to one of the other brands with a Civic Si or a Forte GT? Let me know what you're gonna do in the comment section. But until we meet another day and another abandoned parking lot, if you knew the channel and you're on your way out, hit that subscribe button. I promise you it's worthwhile. Come back for more. If you are a subscriber, thank you for being part of the Radies Rides family. We got to give a huge thank you for working his butt off hard. Stephen Flood with Stephen Flood Photography. Show him some love in that comment section. Let him know what you think about his camera skills. Thank you, Stephen, for all that you do. And just like always, guys, I'll see you on the next ride.